Hey humans, how's it going? Susan Ruth here. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hey Human Podcast. This is episode 135, and it's a little bit different in that on this episode, I had psychic medium Susie Kerr Wright. The night before I was going to have my conversation with Susie, I was at a music industry event here in town in Nashville, and I was introduced to a woman named Sarah, Sarah Kowarski, and uh, she and I got to talking, uh, and I said to her just off the cuff, uh, would you be interested in having a reading from a psychic medium, because I'm interviewing one tomorrow, and since I don't know you, and you don't know her, it would be great, because there's not any time for anyone to look anyone up, and I texted Susie and said, hey, if I bring you a stranger to do a reading for, would you do it on air? And Susie was game, and Sarah was game, and so that was really fun. (laughs) So at the end of this episode, um, uh, Susie does a reading for Sarah, and it was so wild and cool and spot on, and oh my gosh, um, I was so blown away by it that when we came upstairs uh, from the podcast room, we were in my kitchen, and I said to Susie offhandedly, hey, by any chance, um, my friend Charlie passed away this year, and I asked Susie if he was around at all, because I didn't, you know, do a reading with Susie or anything, um, and, you know, during the conversation, and she said, "Uh, let me check, so she checked in, and sure enough, the first thing she says uh, to me is what is the deal with the number 13? Why is that important? He's saying the number 13 and (laughs) that blew me away because I met Charlie at a fundraiser and we sat at table 13 and we were too far away from each other at the table to talk. But later at the after party, I went up to him just to break the ice. I said, hey, do you know the significance of the number 13? And that began a wonderful, lovely friendship um, and and every once in a while he would send me a picture of the number 13 when he'd see it out and about. That was like our thing. So it was just so wild that that was the very first thing she mentioned um, to me about Charlie. And then she went on to tell me some other stuff that was definitely Charlie. So that was really cool. A couple weeks later, I went to see Susie. I was so blown away by this conversation that we had. I went to go see her here in town in Nashville. And I thought, well, you know, let's see what what happens if I get some focused energy. And sat down with Susie and my great-grandmother and her husband and um, this other lady came through. And (laughs) it was funny because I was annoyed because all the messages were for my mom, pretty much. I mean, there was like a little bit for me, but mostly it was stuff for my mother to know. And it was stuff that I didn't know at all. In fact, there were names that were mentioned that I didn't know. Um, I didn't know, for example, the name of my great-grandmother's husband. Um, and in fact, he, he was born with one name and they changed it to another name. And I didn't know that. And so when I called my mom later, she said, oh yeah, I kept notes during the conversation with Susie. And after the fact, I called my mom <laughs> and she, my mom verified everything that Susie had said. So that was pretty wacky for sure. Um, That leads into another interesting thing. Tonight, uh, my friends and I went to a 2019 predictions thing that Susie and some of her uh, friends put on. And they sat at a table and it was, see if I get the names right, uh, Judy Acutonics, such a cool name. Um, Oh no, Acutonics maybe is the name of her company. Or maybe that is her last name. I should have looked that up better. But Judy is a sound healer. And I've actually been at an event where Judy did uh, like the singing bowls and stuff. Woo, boy, does that make all the hair stand up and everything stand up. It's really cool. Uh, Kiki Dabrowski, Tony Bernard, and of course Susie was there, Tish Owens, and Deb Bishop. And what they did was separately, they all came up with their predictions for 2019 as psychics and mediums and astrologers and and all that, and tarot readers. And uh, they all, in one at a time, gave their predictions. And it was really wild to hear how similar they all are uh, in what they saw. 
one of the big things they said for 2019 is uh, nurturing and self-love and self-care. Um, they said, let's see, it's all about listening, a shift in personal growth, um, that people need to be present to their personal stories, to reclaim their own space instead of worrying so much about what other people think or what other people are doing. Um, the one thing that Deb said, um, Deb said, practice, I love this, she said, practice creating memories of your future. In other words, don't keep referencing where you've been, but create create the vision of where you are going. It'd be like, it's certainly the concept of be here now, only it's be where you are shooting for. So you're manifesting what, what it is that you want to see in your life. See, so Deb talked about being addicted to the struggle, that humans are very addicted to the struggle right now, and that 2019 would be a good time to break free of that. Um, what else? Let's see. Tish said communication is very important, thinking before we speak. Wages are going to go up for people. Um, don't overspend, though. Make sure to verify, verify, verify. Um, that was something also that uh, Tony said to uh, be careful of who you trust. That was a big warning for him to people. Um, Let's see, what else was there? Changes are coming. Uh, uh, one of them said, who was it that said this? Um, I think it was Tish. So there were three people that were gonna emerge, three leaders, a man with hope, um, another man who was not super touchy-feely, and then a woman, a loving woman who will prevail after being made um, fun of for the fact that she, um, is like an open-hearted person. So these are three people, I guess, that are in the limelight or maybe in politics, uh, people in positions where they would be seen. Um, she put a warning out for ocean life. There's be kind, be fierce, hold space for uh, love, be a beacon of love and hope, not to be a beacon of fear. This is all really good stuff. Um, let's see, Tony said, uh, the economy is going to be a sell-off year in 2019. I actually have no idea what that means because I don't do the stock market. Um, but I imagine it means you get rid of stocks? I don't really know. Don't don't quote me on that. I'm not sure what it means. Uh, he said there'd be more stuff about renewable energy. Uh, he said politicians are all lying on either side of the aisle, which, I mean, that's probably every year, not just the years to come. Uh, young ideas, uh, or I'm sorry, young people having great ideas. It's time, uh, 2019 is a good time to make a leap. Uh, break it down to the core concept of what it is you want to be or who you want to be or what you want to do so that you don't overwhelm yourself with the big details. Um, so he said that there's a big change coming in 2020, something that will change everything. And later on, somebody in the audience said, well, what does that mean? And he said it had to do with technology and AI and stuff like that. So I thought that was interesting. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of self-care stuff. Uh, suppose it's going to be the year of the pig, which is interesting. Um, and that's in Chinese, the year of the pig and earth pig. So uh, that's a really good time for gathering resource, learning to listen, learning to communicate, uh, mindful of budget. So she's the second one that said be mindful of budget. Uh, Susie said it's a time of taking back one's personal power. I'm reading my notes in case you're wondering. Um, seeing each other as brothers and sisters, creating what you want, uh, being aware of personal responsibility, letting other people be who they are and not getting in their business, um, learning ways, better ways to express personal, um, power, uh, which I thought was kind of a good thing. I mean, it's important to be healthy and and stand your ground and know who you are and, and that kind of thing. Uh, there's going to be four eclipses this coming year. Susie said February 13th felt like a big day. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that's helpful for you, but I hope it is. Thought it would be fun. Actually, I can't even take credit for that idea. My friend Ellen said, you know, after you go to that thing, you should read some of the predictions for the people that listen to Hey Human, I thought that is a very good idea, a uh, perfect idea to mix in with uh, with Susie's and my conversation. So, whew, that's a mouthful. I don't know if you listened to the whole preamble. hope you did. Um, oh, one other thing is um, 
I did mention uh, in the conversation I had with Susie, with Sarah there, that um, there was a book about uh, when the soul, when a person dies and their soul moves into this one world and then the last time anyone says their name in the first world, then they move on to the next world. Um, super cool book and it is, I didn't, I couldn't remember it in the moment. It's called A Brief History of the Dead and it is by Kevin Brockmeyer. Um, really great book. I really enjoyed it very much. Uh, what else? Oh, just the usual stuff. HeyHumanPodcast.com. It's got links, lots and lots of links. Please check it out. Uh, the Amazon portal is on the website as well. You can click on the Amazon portal and shop. Uh, and it helps support Hey Human and keep it ad free. And social media, Hey Human Podcast and all the social media places. Um, and I think that's, that's it. So as we are heading into the final weeks of the year, hard to believe, um, sending you all love and good thoughts and hope and joy. And um, I know it's a tough time of year for people, certainly. Uh, it has its ups and downs. Um, but, you know, as I, I like to say, we are in this together and I love you and I'm glad you're out there. And uh, if 2018 wasn't a great year for you, um, or even if it was, I hope uh, that 2019 is really the best one yet. So let's go into it with that and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm excited. We still have a couple more episodes before the end of the year. And uh, as always, just thank you. Thank you so much for listening and for being a part of this. Um, I love it so much. And uh, because you listen, I get to keep doing it. So thanks for that. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hey Human. Uh, we have Susie Kerr Wright who is a psychic medium. Uh, what are all your accolades? I mean, you're an astrologer and benevolent goddess. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, astrologer, psychic medium. I'm a Reiki master. I work with energy. Oh, wow. I do... Um, I do. I read the tarot. Um, I teach all of these things, yeah. and um, I'm also a certified life coach on top of everything else, wow. so kind of blends. I feel like that's a good comp. I mean, yes. that that's sort of... It kind of ties it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then we have Sarah uh, Kowarski. Yes, I got it right. Yep. Yes. And Kowarski. we just met last night. Yes, we did. And uh, got into a conversation about podcasting, and you had intimated that you wanted to come check it out. Mm -hmm. And Susie was so kind and said, yeah, Thank it's fine. Much. So this is going to be fun. Uh, something new and different for the listeners, and let's see what happens. So Susie, uh, let's go backwards and uh the, you know, I like to start kind of in the very beginning. It's not a quote unquote normal thing, right? I, in my belief system, I think everyone has gifts of intuitiveness and some people are freaked out by it. They shut it down. Some people are like, oh, I've thought about Bill today. And then suddenly Bill calls after not hearing from Bill for years or, you know, things like that. So when did you first start noticing that you knew things or felt things? Um, well, it, it sounds a little hokey, but like, literally, I was born into this world. Mm. Like I was the kid that, you know, when, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm old. So back in the days when the Ouija boards were new, and those <gasps> were fun, you know, we played with those things. Those and things yeah, I, I always me. wondered if that's why my, my teen years turned out to be so ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, but anyways, the, um, but I never stopped. Like, you know, all my friends would, they would, they moved on to other things. Mm -hmm. And I stayed immersed mm -hmm. in that world. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I was, I, I love to hold seances and I love to do, you know, all that, anything that had to do with the, you know, what was called the occult back then sure. was my jam. That was, was there a lineage what attracted in your family? Me. Was my there... mom and apparently my bio dad, who I never knew, um, he was pretty he was pretty twisted but he was pretty gifted okay and he was a musician traveled all around and um never really lit anywhere never took responsibility for all seven of his children oh my god 
Seven. Uh, seven. Lucky number but seven. He was, you know, and it's it's possible that his that his, you know, um, that his addiction issues and all of that came from trying to suppress a lot of this. You know, I always wondered about that. Um, but the one brother that I know that was closest to him said that he you no know, he knew things, and I was like, are you sure that wasn't bar tricks? You know, he said, no, no, no. He knew things, mm. so so it came from him, but it, but it really it also came from my mom, who didn't believe in it, didn't really like it, prayed it away when when it would happen. Mm. She, she said, "I just ask God to remove it." It's like, why? We could be it's like a, a great team, you yeah. know. We should work together. Mm -hmm. So so it was just always part of me, and I and I also grew up near Salem, Massachusetts. So ah. that was I, I never felt more comfortable anywhere, you know, right. than I did there. Have you been to Lilydale? So yes, mm -hmm. I've I studied there. It, that's on my bucket list to go to Lilydale. Which Sarah, that's a um, a community of mediums and psychics and and energy workers and all that kind of stuff. I read a book about it when I was in college. I was like, I have to go there someday. It's really sweet wow. little town. Yeah, yeah. It, it really I would love is. To do that. Um, it's up in New York, mm -hmm. or Lilydale, New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, there may even be a documentary. <laughs> I feel like there on it. are several. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a really nice little place. All the houses are old Victorians. It's a gated community, so okay. you literally have to be a registered medium with the the Lilydale Assembly to live in that community. Okay. And that's uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, I'm gonna scoot you forward just yeah. a hair. Mm -hmm. I just want to get you better. There we volume. go. Yeah, better volume. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, you were talking about the games that we play as children, and I have some really freaky games that I remember from being a kid with that Ouija board, things that happened and that were inexplicable, and I vowed to never touch one of those things again. And then, remember the game Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board? That yes. That all the kids played? I've heard oh of my it. God, I've yes. never played it. So you would lay, one of the friends would lay out, and then on the floor, and then all the other friends would just put two fingers around them and then you would chant it's so weird but these <laughs> these these games mm -hmm. carry through generation after generation mm -hmm. but and you would say light as a feather stiff as a board light as a feather and you would repeat that mantra mm -hmm. and then your friends two friends three friends could lift this other friend up into the air with just these fingers wow we've all i mean you obviously have not done it but Susie, you've done it and okay. i asked my really? mom about it when she's like oh yeah we played that when we were little i was like what so weird. let me tell you something the, the interesting story about that we were talking a little a little bit ago about the arthur finley college where i studied uh, mediumship and you know it's a, it's it's like a hogwarts over it's in a England. real life harry potter school absolutely wow. amazing place Wait, and i'm sorry before you before you tell your story mm -hmm. it's say it again the arthur finley college and that's what part of england stanstead is England. Stansted, England. It's about an hour north of London. Yeah, I, mean, it's, well, I it's so saw that by just random chance a couple of years ago, and my friend Hannah Bethel and I obsessed. We were like, we are going to go there. We're going to raise money or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I've, I've been over there twice. And um, and actually, uh, one of the tutors, the, one of my tutors there, the second time I went was a man named Tony Stockwell, who's like, he's, he's like super a rock famous. star. Yeah. And, yeah. And I just, I was just, I'm so happy about this. I was accepted into his uh, year-long mentorship program. Oh so I'm going to be studi starting studies with him um, in December, actually. In, in England? No, here. It's It's online. It's, that's wonderful yeah. congratulations so i'm really excited about that but that's but the what i was going to say is that i totally forgot what i was going to say oh, we were about uh, oh yeah when one of my trips over there there was a man named jose madrado that they brought in and this man channels um you, you've got to look him up he's incredible mm -hmm. he channels the master artists and he can paint a toulouse lautrec a matisse a you know a, a renoir in in minutes just completely channeling them and his story is wow. intense and I saw him there and I watched him do this and if if I hadn't been in the room I wouldn't have believed some of the things that I saw and he has these chan these spirits of doctors that travel with him and at one point the entire room there were about 200 of us in the room watching him do this it's it filled up with the smell of ether it just passed through us all wow. and he said oh that's the doctors they let us know he, they let me know when they're here. <laughs> and then everyone passed and out because it was no, ether <laughs> but it wasn't that's the thing nobody did like yeah. that was the freaky thing i'm like <laughs> we he had us do a demonstration of that light as a feather stiff as a board mm -hmm. we actually did that and i was one of the people i literally picked this picked this man up off the chair is that Reiki? What is that? Reiki? What is that? A no, form of it's, it's a telemetry? It's or? kind of a form of belief, really. Okay. You know, if somebody tells you you can't do something, you can't, you, you, you're not going to do it, you know, but if yeah. you, if you, 
el eliminate the belief and you believe in all possibilities I'm all about that. is very if law I of attraction. I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I have a theory about this. So you know that First of all, I'm like you. I don't believe something until I see it or experience it for myself Likewise. because I was raised by a scientist and an archaeologist, and they're very fact-based. Fact but I have seen things that the quote-unquote normalcy of the world couldn't explain. Do you know reading about these people, like the women who lift the cars off the babies or the people on uh, um, sorry, uh, angel dust who one person high on angel dust beats 12 cops. And you've read stories like this about, you know, these strange supernatural strengths that just surge through people in a moment. And I thought a lot about it. And I think, you know what, it's not that that particular moment of in extreme stress or fear or highness um, creates that ability. It's already in you. Absolutely. And it just, in that moment of like sheer terror, there's a car on my baby, you're not thinking, I can't lift this car. All you're right. thinking is save the baby. When you are high as a kite, you're, all of your gatekeepers are like, no, 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 or bye, 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 bye. Right. And so you, it really fascinates me. I'm thinking, my God, we really, truly are all superheroes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And rest and in peace, Stanley, who just passed away. But I think he understood yeah. that in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why so many people could relate to his characters. Yes, it, every character had that in them. They were average. You know, well, I don't know yeah. every, but yeah, they yeah. were average people. And underdogs in a lot of ways. That, yeah, yeah, they pulled that out of themselves. And so, so going back to your uh, initial question, you know, or your initial comment about like, yes, everybody is born with abilities to see and hear and understand things on you know, what we deem the other side, which is literally really right in our face. Right. <laughs> it's around us all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, but just di different people have different levels of it, you know, and I kind of mm -hmm. compare it to like a, a musician. It's like, you know, or a singer, like everybody can sing, you mm -hmm. know, to some degree. Some people really are not good at it, but, and some people are going to go on to be, you know, the, the, like superstars, you know, and there's every level in between. Mm. And some people never aspire to be on a stage, but they have immense talent. And it's it's all different. You know, psychic work is a lot like that. Wow. And, um, and It's so also a muscle, right? It you can, is. And you, you can get it stronger You can and stronger. develop it, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, if you don't have the talent for it, you can't develop Foster it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. if you don't have the basic talent born with to be able to sing, you know, you can train yourself, mm -hmm. but will you ever have what, it, you know, that, that complete, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever I'm trying to say there, you know, right? yeah. the the whole package. Right. Um, and so that's that's the difference between, uh, you know, or, or that's that's how everybody can experience this stuff, and that's mm -hmm. why that's why people can have all these incredible mediumistic type experiences with you know visitations from their loved ones in their dreams and things yeah. like that, but never be a medium. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It's not. It's just, it's not for everybody to do. And again, mm -hmm. being asleep, the gatekeepers are down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That the we can't know is vanished. I, yeah. I, it's, I have these really wonderful conversations with my dad because he is a scientist. So, you know, he he is the, the scene, right? He is the thing that can be seen, the thing that can be disproven. So, we, and he blew, I've said this before on the podcast, but he blew my mind once when I said, him, well, all scientists are just trying to prove everything's true, you know, or whatever. And he's like, no, no. No, it's, wrong. it's the other way. Yeah. Like, we all trying to prove it's wrong. <laughs> yes. I met a man when I was over in London, one of my trips. I went to this place called the Astrology Store, and I met mm. the owner, and he's an extremely eccentric character. I absolutely fell in love with this guy. And we it's ended up in this... people like that. Oh, God, he was just brilliant. Yep. And we were walking through the store and looking at books, and I, felt, I just looked at him at one point, and I said, oh, isn't astrology so wonderful? Yeah. And he said, wonderful. It's the bane of my existence. <laughs> and I was like, wait. He goes, because I am a scientist yeah. and I have been trying to disprove astrology my entire life and I can't. Right. And I was like, wow. There was a test in the 70s. I think he it was worked a at the store. psychology. He was the owner. He was the owner, was the owner of, the of the store. store. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The, what a the, contradiction there. There was a, I, think, I want to say it was Stanford. I can't remember exactly now. I'll dig Dig it, dig it up and put the link on the website on heyhumanpodcast.com. But um, there was a uh, psychology professor and he was talking about astrology. And of course he was like, it's bullshit. And and granted, the, the cup of tea astrology that you get in your daily paper that's like, you know, you all 
have a coat, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's right. The stuff but I write it. I know. Super it's, fluffy, I, it, I that, put it out every day going like, do I want to put this out there? But people love sun sign astrology. But yeah. It's never going to be accurate for everybody. Right. It's, it's kind of a the curse of the astrologer. It's like to do it or not to do right. it. Right. Because there's this sort of glossy crib note. And then the deep dive is, of course, birthday, where you were born, what time you were born, all that kind yes. of stuff. And it's all Way very more interesting. To it. But so this, this professor handed out... Um, he said, what is everybody's sign? And then he handed out everybody um, a piece of paper with their sign on it, with the little descriptor. And he said, all right, now, how many people feel like this is true? And everyone's like, oh, my God, spot on. Oh, yeah. It's exactly right. This is so me, all this. They were all the same. And so there is that yep. thing. But I think that, again, that's that surface level mm -hmm. of, of um, what do you call it? The, the um, not, um, what do you call it? The mentalists that can just sort of scan a person and be able to say... Yeah, oh God, they, I have a friend who does that. He's, he's brilliant at it. And it's like... Mentalists are fascinating. Mentalists are incredible. Yeah. But, um, Explain the difference for people listening, what the difference between a mentalist and, a, and what you do is. Well... It's coming from a totally from, different place. Yeah, yeah and from what I understand, and I don't want to underplay the talent that it takes to be a good mentalist, but mentalists are excellent from what I understand. And, you know... Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they're excellent at reading body language. They're excellent at, at reading the subtle cues. They mm -hmm. use wordplay to manipulate people into saying the mm -hmm. response that they know they want to get. Mm -hmm. And it's it's amazing. Yeah. Um, psychic work is... You're not doing any of that. Like half the time when I'm reading for people, I don't look at them, and it's it, because I use charts, I use cards, and, and uh, you know, so I'm definitely not reading your body language. Um and it comes from it, it, it comes from a, a channeled place. It's yeah. really different. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that some mentalists are not able to channel some information. You know, that I mean yeah. that could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works together. They're very, very um uh, closed about how they do things yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. It's like the magic community. It's you know? micro. Yeah, it, it, totally. Yeah. It's like a magician. Yeah. yeah. And and I just love them. I think they're fantastic. But that would be the difference. Like for me, I'm connecting to another uh, vibration. Mm, I'm connecting yeah. to a different vibration. Mm -hmm. It's because again, talking with my dad about it and you know, it used to be that we would have these conversations and he's like, no, this is all bullshit, mm -hmm. you know, witch doctors and charlatans. And now even science has come to, you know, it used to be, it Quantum was just, physics. yes, Open exactly. The door. This yep. is why I love theoretical physics because yep. the understanding of my God, there could be anything out there. You know, quarks didn't exist until they did. Of course they existed, but nobody knew about them, mm -hmm. right? Or multidimensional or mm -hmm. the multiverse or any of that stuff that's now been theorized. Sure, it's theorized, but people have a very strong feeling toward it in in the science community. So I'm like, throw no babies the out the with no bath water. Right? <laughs> yeah. Keep the baby, run the bath, keep going. You know, <laughs> and I got to tell you too, it's like, you know, a lot of people... Um, are surprised at how skeptical I am. I am about too. These yeah. I hold a very healthy dose of skepticism. It's important. I do not. As a matter of fact, I'm. I'm actually. I'm maybe a little too far the other direction because I'm the first one to call bullshit on, you know, some of these crazy, you know, loony things that I see out there. Well, there are, are doing, of, there are a lot right, of people that are car carnival esque in that they mm -hmm. they are not really what they say they are. Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of charlatan and, in the world. Yeah. And that exists in anything. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, so yeah, I mean, so it helps to have that, you know, that, that, I mean, sometimes I'm skeptical or I'd like, I'll, I'll do or say something or hear something bad from a client. And it's like, wow, I did that. Okay. I guess this works, you know, cause I still have that doubt, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I, I love John Edward. He is my absolute hero mm -hmm. and I've John seen Edward for those times. that don't oh. know um, he is a medium a channel and uh, communicates with those who have passed into the other realms as it were mm -hmm. he had a show called Crossing Over mm -hmm. that was really um, that was on TV for a long time and he actually gave that up because of the way they were editing the show they were making it look like the hits were coming in the way in a different way and he was like that's not I don't want to set people's expectations right. that that's how mediumship works because it's not mm -hmm. and so he walked away from that whole world yeah but he but he was sharing and the last time I saw him he was sharing a, a, a time where he doubted himself and it, at his level you think like oh yeah he must never doubt you know mm -hmm. but it's always there when you're doing this stuff because there's there's no 
tangible proof. It's really, you know, you have to suspend all belief when you're working in this realm. And um, not when you're receiving necessarily, but when you're working in it. It's like you can't have, mm -hmm. you can't have that filter on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, and I find it fascinating too that people are willing to have faith in an omnipotent being and then on the same token not believe that people are capable of you know a deep a deep intuition or being able to scratch through the veils you know mm -hmm. i mean everyone's entitled to their opinion obviously but it, i'm always fascinated by that that and soothsayers are in the bible as well yep and you know and it's funny because I, I mean i i am a member of a christian religion <laughs> so i'm a technically soothsayer? a christian it's the, what she is a soothsayer okay. prophets okay. A prophet. and, yeah okay yeah, they were all throughout the bible dream interpreters yeah there was oh, yeah, one there are. was uh there was i remember i can't remember which book it's in but it's so uh, interesting and like amazing that i'm in the same environment as that right now <laughs> <laughs> because you read about it but then you don't believe it till you see it Mm -hmm. That is right. That, so, I mean, and I think that's healthy. It's very real. I think it's healthy. It's it's not healthy to just systematically doubt something either, and it's not healthy to systematically believe something. Right. Right. That's a, it's a give and take for sure. There's a I one mean, you can feel her. You can. You yeah, can she feel, has. Yeah. She has a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> it's got it going on. Yeah, it's, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's strange. As I, I mentioned when you came into the house, it's like, oh, your eyes. There's something about your eyes oh, that are not to be weird, but like mm -hmm. almost supernatural. I'm yeah. like, there's, I'll take but, that. That's but I've, I've been to, so you have the, um, the fortune telly show. Wicked awesome fortune telly show. Here yeah. in Nashville. Cool. Live talk show. Where Once a light, month. Um, wow. Psychics and, and healers and, and people that work in the yeah. otherworldly stuff in mm -hmm. Nashville. Yeah. And I'm really actually cool. one of my guests, uh, previous Deb, uh, De Deb Randolph. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was a guest. Yeah, yeah. She was a guest on your show, and mm -hmm. I approached her, and she came onto this show, and she wow. talked about um, her experience as a abductee. It's really mm -hmm. fascinating conversation. That's interesting. Yeah. So, um, but what I was going to say about the biblical thing is, there's this. I can't remember what book it's in, but there's a moment where God's calling a meeting. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, Moses is like, hey, everybody, come to the meeting, come to the meeting. And there's a couple women that are divining and they're doing the soothsaying. And Moses is pissed. And he's like, hey, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, hey, <laughs> come to the meeting. God called. And they're like, we're kind of busy. And so, um, and I, I think it was Moses. I'm almost, it might have been Abraham, but I'm almost positive it was Moses. And he's, he's, uh, he, really, I was married to Abraham because my name's Sarah. Uh -huh. yeah. There you go. We'll and, find out. I haven't met an Abe yet. <laughs> oh, you'll have your first baby at 9,000 years old. Um, <laughs> yeah. right, so he, go, he goes back with a little tattletale. And he's like, God, they won't come. They're busy doing soothsaying and he's like leave them be that's you know i gave them that gift it's cool let them let them do their thing and i was like yeah you go god way to stand up for the soothsayers <laughs> yeah, i don't know yeah. i just remember that passage can't block that flow yeah well, always that causes a different kind of vibration exactly you, you gotta right. let it ride exactly well so i was saying like about me and my birth dad i wonder if if a lot of his Behave, you know, oh. I, mean, I wonder if he was trying to explore that because, for example, not that I've ever, but I mean, I'd be lying if we all said we haven't ever engaged in one kind of hallucinogen, let's say. Mm -hmm. But for example, I mean, it's it's natural to do that. And for example, there are some out there like for for well, who's Steve Jobs, the Apple guy. I mean, he was going, he was he was taking LSD and sure. just trying to explore himself. And the guy's a genius. Yeah. I mean, all of these rock stars that that we were blessed to have in our generation, I mean, a lot of them were, were tripping acid and they were exploring themselves, but they, some of them took it too far and others, it was, a, it was part of who they were in that moment in their lives where they were like, yo, I'm going through something and I feel like I need to be pushed a little bit or I need to foster that, but I don't know how... I don't, I need that, I need that natural impulse and it might come from a hallucinogen. Well, I think it also knocks down that barrier. It, it yeah. does. And, and what I was going to say, it's interesting because over time, you know, my experience in, in that realm, you know, for many, many years, um, that was when I was most afraid of what I was doing. You know, I would, I would read for people and, and it was just like, oh my God, you know, like, how do I know this? Like, it was freaking me out because I had no guidance. Mm -hmm. And so I kept trying to find other ways to connect with it, but not connect with it. And I would go, you know, in and out of it. And, yeah. and, um, and 
it really wasn't until you know until I was clean and sober for a, yeah. a while that it then it was like oh I get this now yeah. you know because the problem with mucking around in the um the addictive part was mm -hmm. that it, it was it was blocking my it was yeah. blocking more than it was helping right. but it was taking down that barrier it was just it was yeah. an interesting strange place to be and right. I, I would never want to go back there it's like and and the other thing that I was going to say too is a lot of our heroes, like the rock star heroes and stuff, they grew up in times where this stuff wasn't out there for people to understand. Yeah. You know when I when I started doing astrology, it was back in the seventies. You didn't have corner metaphysical stores. You didn't have yeah. teachers online everywhere trying to hey take my course, I'll make you a million dollars. You know, I mean, yeah. you didn't have that craziness that we have yeah. now. So nobody really knew. Like you had to seek teachers and mentors and right. things like that. And so you know, whatever you needed to do yep. to, to try and touch that part of you yeah. or to get to a part of you is what you did. You know, I'm right. not saying that's why I drank or did what I did. Uh, that definitely was not it because that ran in my family. But at <laughs> but, the same time, I think but there was have to... I, it's I a think scary thing to come to terms with. It is, but it's very real. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if... No, it, it is that... You had to go through that to be here today. I know that I had to go through all of my life experiences. Everything that here, we've yeah. all done yeah. to this point, there's a reason why. Yep. And we may not understand it in that moment, which is great. Because if anything, you might not understand it for 10 years. And then you're like, well, I'm really happy I made that mistake. Or I'm really happy that I went to that party and mm -hmm. I met you. Because mm -hmm. if I didn't go, we wouldn't be here right now. So I it's think very... it's all just... Say la vie, such is life. You I know, feel very just, in control of my fate and yep. my destiny. I feel like it's a partnership. Right. You know, it's a partnership it, with yep. the universe. And it is. We're co-creating constantly. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what people get mixed up, too. And, you know, one more thing I wanted to say about that mm -hmm. is, like, that's one of the reasons why I like to teach is because, that you know, weekly I get calls from people. It's like, help me. I'm feeling things feeling different. This. I'm seeing yeah. things. I'm questioning things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what can I do? And so that's one of the reasons why I actually actively encourage you know people to convene and get, mm -hmm. you know sit in circle and, and learn um from each other so yeah and yeah. because that wasn't available to me and it took me a long time you know to, and you're providing an opportunity for that to be not only an outlet but a resource and an energy yep. that can't really be duplicated because it's 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 a one time that all of them together Mm -hmm. Everybody earning their seat there. That's really cool. Yeah. Wow. So and then so, oh, and the yes. other thing you you, you had said something I was going to um, respond to that. The I universe. Yeah, the co-creation. Yeah. That's one of the things that, that that gets people confused about the law of attraction thing when they first start getting into it. It's like, so I can create anything I want, but uh, how come I can't create the job I want or the mm. partnership I want or whatever? And it is because it, it's like there's so much more to that than what, you know, what people get from the secret the first time they watch it. You have to watch it multiple times. You have to read about it. You have to immerse yourself in it and understand that it is, it's a joint venture, like you said. Mm. You know, we are constantly co-creating with spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like that's when it becomes important to understand what are you creating? Well, look around see what's around yeah you just I think created that, it <laughs> after i go on a date with someone and i'm like all right good job universe i like this about him or that about him that, that's that was great. good i like that i yeah. said Th that's some good stuff keep keep that going let's let's expand on that in tune. yes yeah i that's feel really like cool yeah i mean that was not my whole life but certainly over the not past few yeah. years <laughs> no i agree i've yeah. recently started to be very similar to that so i can definitely relate yeah, I think it's important to, to again... Be in conversation with the universe always. And to know the universe in, is inside of you. It That's is. That's the other thing, yep. too. I think many of us go through... And I believe this wholeheartedly that, <laughs> you know, many of us go through life... Um, we're taught from a very young age that we are not worthy of many things. Um, our, our own dominion over our bodies, all these things, mm -hmm. our minds, and, and, and people are, it's a constant manipulation on, from the outside world, sure. right? And in that, and even in religion, there is um, a priest or a pastor or somebody that's sort of the intermediary between you and, and a higher power. And I think that's an unfortunate thing because it's in us. We are yeah. the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, we are made up of the same stuff 
as the universe. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love remembering that right now we're breathing the air that the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. you know, inhaled or Jesus or the mm -hmm. Buddha or, you know, mm -hmm. yep. John Lennon or, you know, whatever. Yeah, who was not always a great guy, let's be honest. But, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was on a path. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for you, when you were starting to develop these gifts, did you have a mentor then that came in and said, oh, I see that you're, or did you do it on your own? No, I was self-taught for many, many years, probably two decades mm -hmm. before I actually really started finding teachers mm -hmm. and you know and um it really amped up like i guess the end of the 80s into the early 90s was when it i i was kind of surrounded by people i could really learn from and it amped everything up and it was like oh this makes sense now oh this makes sense oh i was thinking wrong about that oh okay this is energy work you know and it yeah. just all really kind of came together mm -hmm. in in late 80s early 90s really cool. but um but yeah, I mean, I was doing, you know, it's funny that people ask me, like, how, how do you know how long you've been doing readings? And it's like, uh, the only thing I can remember is when John Lennon died, I was sitting on the floor in my apartment with somebody, and I had my cards out, and I just finished hand drawing his chart, and I was about to do a reading when somebody came busting in the door <laughs> to tell, tell us what happened. So it's that long at least. You know, because at that point I knew how to cast a chart, so I obviously had been doing it a while. So, um, so yeah, ba again, back in those days it was just so different. You know, you didn't have computers, you know, where you could just oh, punch so in the yeah. information and boom, you get somebody's chart in front of you. Instant and gratification. Yeah, and, you know, and, and mediums were, I mean, everything was so closeted. Everything was yeah. closeted. Even though we think of the 70s and 60s and 70s, the hippies, and they were all into astrology, it's like, yeah, but... The, the world, the mainstream, wasn't accepting of this, you know? And now that's what's happening. And there's so much good and, and so much crazy that comes with that, too, you know? Yeah. it's There's so much misinformation out there. And, um, and so, you know, I just kind of feel like my mission is to just keep putting out there, you know, yeah. the, the best information and to help people find, you know, find the, the, the most helpful ways to experience... The things that they're experiencing yes. and there can be an arrogance on either side there can be the arrogance of the people are like absolutely this stuff is bullshit it doesn't mm -hmm. exist to me that's an arrogance because who knows like we don't we know what we feel and and think and have learned and through our own experiences yeah. but None of us actually know. Right, anything. we don't know till we get there. And then I know people who have gifts that have taken that to extreme and, and had it incorporated into the as if they are some sort of meta god, and that's a bummer too, you know. So everything in moderation. Yes, <laughs> yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah you know, it's and, and and it's it's funny, you know. I have Sag rising. I'm a Scorpio, but I have Sag rising. So between those two things, and Aquarius Moon, so I get a lot of these really, uh, I you know, I, you I get all this stuff. <laughs> I have that but, well, star app Sag, and I'm, like, I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> Sag rising is, is you know, I'm Sagittarius is the it, it can be an exaggerator, and and so I will and very soapboxy. So I will climb up on my soapbox, and I have to really remember that like. Like, no, I don't have the, you know, I, my, my masters, my teachers have taught me certain things. There's certain things I know from the experience yeah. I have, but that ain't it. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a really, you know? there's a beauty in saying, you know, this is what I feel and believe and think, but I might be wrong mm -hmm. and it's okay. It's humbling. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a, I, I don't know, for me, it's just a better ebb and flow in the universe. And just by saying that, of course, I'm saying that makes me right. But that's not what I'm saying. But no, I, I understand, I understand the irony of it. it. There's <laughs> a freedom. I actually wrote this whole article in, uh, for this uh, <laughs> website called Inspire Me Today. And um, and they keep reprinting it. And it's about the freedom of not knowing. Mm. I love it's that. I've been saying that to know? myself since I was a little girl. Yeah. So the beauty of say, life I is not know. knowing. Mm -hmm. It really is. If you knew everything, what's the fun in that? That's exactly. why I love not the, the fool card in my tarot deck. Yeah. I, I have a guild deck, um, and I love this deck. It's very pretty and colorful. Um, uh, but the, the fool is taking a step off a cliff, holding the world in one hand. There's a little dog by its side. Mm -hmm. And I just say, like, there's something so lovely about that, the letting go. And the fool, of course, in the court 
everyone thought he was the dumbest, but in fact, he was, he knew everything he going on. He was the freest. Yeah, yeah he, would, he didn't. Exactly. He, fool he, didn't give a shit. He could walk, he <laughs> could right. walk with kings or but with But he was smart, yeah, too. You know, he's carrying his bag of, like, wisdom and knowledge, and yes. he's, he's, he's cloaked in all of this. He's got, he's got it all. He's yeah. got it all going on. I love the fool know? so much. Yeah. It reminds me of the Kipling poem, If... Um, it's great. It's like, you know, if you can walk with kings nor lose the common touch, you know, it's just a, it's, I love it. Anyway, so there was something you said about astrology that I wanted to ask. Um, so again, it's that deep dive. Oh, I know what it was. I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine. Um, she and I were talking, she was having a bit of a rough day. And I said, well, what's going on? Let's dig a little deeper. And she said, well, you know, in my chart, it says this, that, and the other, it, you know, and I'm going to always be struggling because I have this thing in my chart. And I was like, you know what, you get to, you get you to master your destiny. Yeah, but you I couldn't think, see the eye roll I just did. Yeah, but I, I do think that. that people, unfortunately, oh, somebody's ringing, somebody's right. phone. Um, I do think that people, again, take information and, and then say, oh, well, this is how it is, so this is how it is. It's like, well, wow, no, the universe wants you to grow. It's it ever expanding. It. it wants you to accept it, but it wants you to challenge it. Yes, the and universe that, itself is expanding. Why wouldn't you? you know? I literally heard an astrologer say that to somebody one time. Well, you'll always be like this. You know, and I was just, I was horrified. Yeah. Because I learned a long time ago, reading the, the, the books that I did and learning through the people that I did, these were like the greats and they were all dying off and they're mm. all, you know, it's so sad. Mm. You know, it's like, I, I hope uh, somewhere out there, there has to be people to carry on their message, you know. But anyways, um, I was taught very early on that my job is not to dump a bunch of information onto somebody. It is to show them the way around, through and out. And that's how that's I read. And so, yeah, I never, never, it, there's nothing finite in a chart. You, it's your blueprint. Mm -hmm. You can still screw up a blueprint. Right. You can still add on to a blueprint. It's sliding you doors. Can change. Yes. It's, it's totally Great movie, yours to work with. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and nothing, you know, I, sometimes I'll catch myself using the term of the planets are going to make us, but they, they don't make us do anything. It's like, it's like the waves coming in. Now you have a choice. You can sit on the beach and you can just sit there and eventually the waves, the tide's going to come in. You're going to have to make a move or get swallowed up. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, you know, snorkel on the top. You can boat. Yeah. You can um, dive scuba in. dive, mm -hmm. which is like that's yeah. where you want to be because then you become one with everything that's in there. Yeah. But or you know, y you have choices as to how you interact with these waves yeah. of energy. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. So and that's that's free. That's the free will that comes with all of these things, whether it's tarot or astrology or any form of divination. Yeah. You know, it's never it's never in stone, and that's not just a cop out we say so that we're you know we're never wrong. It's just it's literally the way it is. You yeah. know, like I just to kind of take that one step further and apply it. I've I've had a few readings done at this point, and I I really enjoy it. I, every so often. I almost don't pursue it. It happens. Like, this is happening right now. And it's it's almost like I feel like when my soul is ready for a connection, it's almost like just an inflection point or a reminder or something that the universe is like, you're ready. Again, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Let's explore that. I won't say exactly the card that I always get, but I really like what you said about, and both of you said this, in your own ways that just because you get that card that doesn't mean you just go upstairs sit on the couch put on the tv and like you're good you got it like it's it's a pleasant reminder the way i receive that is a pleasant reminder of this is how you're being perceived right now and into the future but keep doing what you're doing to continue to foster that card mm -hmm. if that's what you want yeah and if it's not what you want you now have a gift and a, and a pleasant atmospheric reminder that you can do whatever you want in your life. Move forward with it. Mm. There's a great quote, and I want to say it was Einstein, but it's probably not. I'm, you can choose to look at the, your life and everything around you as if everything is a miracle, or you can choose not to. Again, paraphrasing. But 
there you go. Yeah. What you see is what you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. right. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's, you know, again, it, it's like that's the beauty of getting any kind of psychic reading is that you're being given insight into the situation. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, it can be, and it can be anything. It's like, okay, well, you're heading down this path and this is the likely outcome. So do you like that? Okay. If not, let's look take, at a different a direction. You know, yeah. the bottom line is though, and here's the part that is, is kind of, I don't know, stationary, I guess, is it's the waves are still coming. They don't stop. So you have to do something always in motion, always growing and yeah. expanding. And, and so, you know, that's, that's where people misunderstand again, this, this, you know, the planets made me do, you know, I love, oh, we're heading into a Mercury retrograde and we're all we're going to hear is yeah. Mercury retrograde made me do this. That's, that's a very human thing, right? When things are going wrong, it's, it's look for something to look, blame. Exactly. <laughs> or look for something, uh, look for something to give thanks to. Yeah. As well. I mean, there's both sides to that coin for sure. Um, it's definitely an optimistic way to view that. I appreciate yeah. that because you could well, blame everything's it. a miracle or nothing is. Yes. Again, and I, yeah. Do I you find agree. that people come to you and say, this catastrophe happened a month after I had a reading from you and you didn't tell me about it? And I think people, again, look to people like you and say, please tell me everything that's going to happen in my life, but no one would ever grow if things didn't happen. Yeah, and that you know what, and as much as I don't want to talk about this, it was probably, I actually had that happen, mm. and it was, it, it really made me rethink. It was one of those moments where I went, what am I doing? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I doing the right thing here? And I really questioned that, mm. and it was, I mean, and it, it happened, like, very quickly too it wasn't something that happened like a year later that you know but yeah I I was I was devastated and obviously the, the woman it happened to was devastated she's still my client today I love her pieces she never she never gave up on me I gave up on me temporarily but um but yeah the and and I really don't have an answer for that I really I mean it's just she wasn't <laughs> supposed to know that's exactly the answer because she needed to move the into experience. something else yeah, yeah. we have and, to have our experiences yeah. also I think that people like you exist so that um the uh, like guideposts in a way mm -hmm. but a human being has to still engage in their life oh, yeah. and Absolutely. some things and I believe you know say what you will but i do believe that we come back again and that yep. we make plans and mm -hmm. the people we know you know we're like oh there you are again or you know what done with you in this life next time we're done we're good oh, we've yeah. finished yeah. Our, our lessons Nine lives. but you have <laughs> to experience the yeah. lesson mm -hmm. we came here to experience certain things and you know and, and it's cool because it, you know you can define it any way you can just say it's reincarnation or spirit or you know different different reasons for me astrologically you can see that in the nodes the, the moon's yeah. nodes mm. the north and the south node the south node represents what you brought in from a past life and the north node is what you're here to accomplish and achieve wow. and work through and and between the two we hang out in our south nodes a lot because what it's you easy. were here to do yeah, no or what, what you what, what you, you brought, in, brought from, in from yeah the past. we okay. kind of stay in that zone a lot you know <laughs> for a long time I always believed that um, your chart you know when you took your first breath that's your birth chart right there and that was the chart that you were given and now I've come to realize that it's you choose the chart that you come here that you choose the chart for what you want to experience in this life. How do people who get induced, it's still the same thing, right? They're like, oh yeah, I knew I'm gonna mm -hmm. get induced, so there It yeah, doesn't matter, doesn't people matter. are always like, oh, I was supposed to be born, and whatever. it's like the day, the moment you took your first breath was the day you integrated with the, the energies. I was in, supposed in to be named world. David, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Wow. <laughs> they thought I was a boy. Oh my and, God. But they had said that about, more so my sister than I, but they had said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, back, I think people find out more nowadays before babies are born, the sex and stuff. Yeah. People well, don't Eastern, like to be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Eastern, there's uh, something called Vedic astrology, which yes, is... Yes, I had Eastern a Vedic astrology, astrology on the show. And, and they so do that at birth. I mean, and, and it was cool because I've never, I, I don't work with that. Um, and the only time I've ever had any kind of validation, I mean, I've worked with other Vedic astrologers and mm -hmm. we played the, let's 
let's uh, you know let's delineate these charts and see if we come up with the same things. And well, we and their calendar would. is different in the Vedic astrology. It is, yeah, it yeah. is slightly different. Um, I was just but, reading about this the other but day. But I had a woman come to me and she wanted to know about her um, about her son, and he was I think he was fifteen at the time or whatever. So I did a chart for for her son, and mm -hmm. we went over all of this stuff and everything, and it, and she was just sat there very quietly, and you know she was. Um, I forget where she was from, um, but anyway, she she just sat there and she's and at the end she said, "That's what the astrologer told me when he was born." And I was like, "So you've had this done?" I'm like, "She's." I just wanted to see if it would be the same, right? And I was like, "Well, okay, thanks for the test, and I guess thanks for the validation." But That's maybe it wasn't cool, a test know? for you, but more it for was, her. Yeah, it was really for her. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't take it wrong. But it's it was, you know. Yeah. You, when you said earlier about how it was sort of a crisis of faith for you and your own skills and understanding of what you do and when that thing, you weren't given that information to give to the woman. Mm -hmm. But isn't it interesting, this is such a human trait that you've probably done thousands of readings, I'm guessing, and been right and great in 99.9% .9 and every once in a while not and yet as human beings we focus on like oh my god I'm not what I thought I was absolutely <laughs> oh yeah there's nothing nothing that drives me crazier than you know and 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 the truth is because I do thousands of readings every year it's like I'm not going to be a hundred percent connected to everybody I'm not I do a lot of Big well, and they will be connected to you okay, too. Though. They they have to yeah. be willing to have that communion. Absolutely, and some open. people some people just want to hear what they want to hear. Right. And I'm pretty well known for not doing that. No BS. <laughs> yeah. So real. And you know, and I would say up up until that point, my mm -hmm. failures I would say were with those people mm. not being not you know not feeling like those those particular people were satisfied with their reading because I'm basically a huge codependent and if I can't help somebody I, you know that bothers me mm -hmm. you know and I hear people very quick to blame their clients you mm -hmm. know I see on these boards you know that I belong to oh, you know, Facebook and uh. stuff it's like oh yeah that client was just stupid or they were wrong or they just didn't know and it's like no let's slow down slow yeah. your roll because yeah. there's dual responsibility yes. there sure. you know well, it's a human trait as well yeah. mm -hmm. do you have a favorite modality of the things you practice of all the different divinations I would say my, my first love was always astrology it's, yeah. it's so rich and I can't mm -hmm. it, it's like I can't wait for the day when people really understand the depth that an, that a good astrology reading can do. Literally, in in the the business of the psychic world that I'm in, you tell people you do astrology, and 99% of them are like, "Oh yeah, I know my sun sign. I don't need that." And it's like, "Oh honey, if you only had yeah. a clue as to what you could learn about yourself, yeah. your future, your past, your relationships, everything mm -hmm. within your chart, mm -hmm. like you would you would go to no one else but an astrologer." Okay. But in the business that I'm in, people want to see the cards. So and I love the tarot, and they work really well together. Like I bounce from one to the one to the next, mm -hmm. like e very easily. But the but I so I would say astrology would be number one. But mediumship is. I never thought that I would love mediumship as much as I do. Mm. When I've always talked to ghosts, I've always had visitations, I've always been connected to that, always, always, always. And that's what made me decide I never wanted to do anything like that. When, you know, when people started, you know, when I started, when I was hearing the chatter, yeah, about mediums and this and that, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I, that's, that was never going to be my path, mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned. I did not want to be a medium because I'd had enough of ghosts. Yeah. They scare you, they pop out of nowhere, you don't know what to do with them. And, and but it was really interesting because I had a transit to my son and um, I have a, a Neptune sun conjunction, which is that's where a lot of this comes from, where the channeling comes from. And um, and it kind of blew the doors open. And I was doing I was I was being kind of. I don't know, propelled into mediumship, I guess you could say. And messages were coming from everywhere. People, literally ghosts were showing up in readings. I mean, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? Because I don't want to do this. So I just, I, I looked up one day and I said, all right, Spirit, you better send me some teachers. And boom, it was like everything fell into place. I was studying. I had a mentor. Yeah. I had, you know, dots crazy. Were being connected. And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. I remember talking to one of my tutors over in England one time, she, you know, she was doing a, a spiritual assessment of me. You know, they do these readings like that. And mm -hmm. it was really awesome. And she said, she said, so first of all, I want to tell you, you were born medium, and not everybody is born into this. And I was like, 
-hmm. okay? And she kept talking, and, and the more she talked, the more I started crying. I'm like, oh and I just look at her and so I'm really supposed to do this? Oh, wow. And she was like, well, of course, dear. And I was like, But it feels probably okay. burdensome at times, right? I mean, if you're in a, it reminds you, what you were just saying reminds me of that scene in Ghost where Whoopi Goldberg is in the room and all these ghosts are coming in to talk to her and she's like, enough, I can't stop. <laughs> that's, and that's what will happen when I do the group readings. Really they'll they'll, oh. come, in, they'll yeah. come in and just millions of them will start coming do in you, at once. But do you have a story that you can impart, uh, you know, maybe an, ex, an, an example of some experience that sticks out in your mind? Um, you know, to... Uh, not off the top of my head, but I will. But overall, what's happened is I I always had this impression that mediumship, even though I watched John Edward and you know I'd seen mediums you know often on my whole life. I mean they you know, um, I always thought that it was basically like, yeah, your loved ones are good, they love you. And I'm like, how many ways can you say that to people? What I didn't understand was being an evidential mediumship when you get the evidence of who these people are and what they felt when they were here and how they feel towards their loved ones. You feel that unconditional love that yeah. they bring in. It is compelling. It is wow. compelling. That's a beautiful word for it. And so I can stay in those two worlds for the rest of my life and mm -hmm. do nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, That's if beautiful. I never did Reiki again, if I never picked up a tarot card again, I mean, astrology and, and mediumship, mediumship is their hand in hand, mm. my passions. Mm -hmm. Wow. So fascinating. I would love for you to maybe uh, give Sarah a reading. Since yeah, you I'm just <laughs> sitting here and I was talking about it. Like, I don't know if you can see the goosebumps, but yeah. Or if we too. have any ghosties that have come in. That's my sign that there's people around and they've been around through this whole <laughs> thing. So I was like... I kind of felt... It's interesting that, the, I, again, I, I, I always believe that these um, occurrences and these experiences unravel for a reason. And at a particular time... Yesterday evening, I came home, and it was it was early in the day today, late last night, however you want to coin it, but I felt like there were people in my room, and I got a little, like, spooked, but I was like, you know what? Come on in. If you're going to be about it, I'm just going to rest my head. I might sleep with the light on, but, <laughs> and I haven't had to do that in a long time, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I felt like there were people there. Yeah, well, you're probably staying in an old house, an Airbnb or something around here. One of my girlfriend's house, house yeah. she was on the couch, and then in the morning she came in and show. she was like, yeah. did you sleep with the light on? And I was like, I did. Mm -hmm. Just a just a dim, faint light, because I just felt like, you know, I it's I've always had that almost like a nightmare where there's somebody right next to me and then I wake up I'm like yo uh, okay see that and that was so my close. impression of what mediumship was going to be like that's yeah. why I was like I don't want that anymore because I've been surprised by those ghosts and I've had them show up in the middle of the night and yeah. I've had them and ones I knew and ones I didn't know and they're not and always nice either sometimes yeah. they're annoying I felt they're, a weirdness so yeah. I was like I'm just gonna like do some meditation and try to like calm this energy down so that I can I can decompress and I can rest myself for a few hours because ultimately that's all I knew I was going to need, mm -hmm. just a few hours of rest. And remember, but you have I dominion felt... over yourself, so you could say, like, I am of the love and light, I am protected by the love and light. If this being is not of my highest good and yes. is also of the love and light, then see you later, Charlie, get out, you know. 100%. Yeah. It's important and, you to know. know. And, and people need to understand, too, something that, you know, again, I don't know everything, but I do know that what we're seeing on TV, this preponderance of, like, frightening scary, lost, stuck souls, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, all over the place is not a common happening. Yeah. It is not. I mean, I, I literally stopped doing paranormal investigations because it's almost impossible to tell somebody <laughs> that, yeah, what's happening is your 16-year-old hormonal teenager yeah. um, is bringing this energy in. It's not a demon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's I've energy. read a lot about that poltergeist behavior is around uh, teenagers, especially girls. Sometimes, who, but it's not it's as common as people think. Yeah. And these TV shows well, have gotten are everybody great, convinced <laughs> yeah. that if something moves in their house, it's a demon, right. you know. And it's like, so just be, you know, just listeners, just please understand <laughs> it's not all demonic, right? <laughs> it's most of it isn't. Most of it is not at all in any way, shape, or form. And and that's the thing. And it's just, you know, it just is kind of funny how, how people are um, 
going so overboard with I it. Do I do think get, people I get love to, it to, it to be, be scared, called, though, don't well, they? Well, yeah, we do. They love and, to be scared. And especially, and I and I find, too, the people that call me, you know, two or three times a week, I'll get calls from people. Like, I have, you know, I have a demon in my house, or I have this, or we're all scared. And, you and know, he won't and pay like, rent. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I'll tell them to smudge. So and they, and, you know, that's the first step, you know, is get your stage out, smudge, open all your doors and windows, let all the smoke out after you do it, and, and clear your house, you know? And, um, and occasionally I will get some people call back, you know, everything's fine. Thank you. You know, um, but a lot of times I get people, well, I don't know how to do, I can't do that. Can you come? And it's like, no, I don't need to drive four hours to your house to have you do something that you can do on your own. I'm, I'm certainly not going to charge you for something like that, you know? And, um, you know, but feel free to call a paranormal team who will come out and, you know, take your money. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, anyways, it's, it's just not. Um, it's not as predominant as people think. And, and the, most of the time, the reaction is like what you had. It's like, hey, you're here. Okay, there's some people here. Good. You leave me alone. I'm going to be in my space. Mm -hmm. We do have the ability to do that. Yeah. You know, in rare cases, there may be something that is elevated or something that is continuing. Yeah. But a lot of times it's because of the energy of the people in yeah. the house holding that space for that. Yeah. I also feel like sometimes beings are just bored and lonely and they're like, wait, you can, you can see me? <laughs> That's again, kind of out of that, straight out of that movie Ghost, where yeah. they, when they realize Whoopi Goldberg can see them, they're like, wait, I, I've been so lonely. Oh, <laughs> that is not well, my experience, uh, you know, and again, I don't know everything, but in my experience with speaking with dead people, it's like, I've never had one come through and say they were lonely. They alone, yes, Some sometimes they'll be like, yeah, I'm good. I I'm was just sort of being myself, facetious, you know? but it's a thing of like, when, <laughs> no, I, when, I know. when nobody notices you and then suddenly someone does, yeah, it's right. like, hey, wait, you can... You can see me? That's so cool. Well, that's yeah. why they come through in groups like that. Like mm -hmm. when I have a, when I'm doing a group reading, that's what it is. It's this excitement of like, oh, yeah, okay, now I can talk to my niece. Now I can talk to my my daughter. Oh, I'm so excited, you know, yeah, and they yeah. and they do. They do get like that. Yeah. yeah. It's it's pretty cool. It's um and they and they kind of all like I call it ganging up on me, you know. Yeah. They just kind of all come in and it's I have to sort them out. Right. It's like in my filter. Head. Yes. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Not in the traditional sense, no. Um, I, I do believe that there are levels, I guess, of evolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's, it's, you know, obviously we understand the human evolution, but the spiritual evolution, there, there are different levels of that. But, um, you know, and, and as, we, as we grow, whatever. You know, one of the movies I thought de depicted that so well was Coco. I still haven't seen that. Oh, I've heard oh it's my great. God, I love it. Still, I no it. spoilers. I haven't seen okay. it. Okay. Well, it was so and they kind of almost dealt with that, you know, and it was, uh. there was this, well, this isn't really a spoiler, but, you know, the concept is it was the Dia de los Muertos and the, and the whole tradition behind it and what the, what the other side was experiencing. And it was interesting because one of the things they said was that as soon as the last person leaves the earth that remembers you, you move on to another yes. space. There's a, I just read a book about that that oh, was quite good. Oh, I get chills. Yes. It was so, it was There's such an African a tribe that believes that uh, I don't know the name of it for them but yeah they believe that we are of this world and then yeah. when we die we go to this other intermediary world yes. and then the last time anyone speaks our name or they die they move to this world to that intermediate and then you move to the final world and that's such a cool concept I think and there's another great I love quotes there's another great mm -hmm. quote is that there are two times you die the first is when you take your last breath and the second is when the last person says your name oh. and I just find that so beautiful that and is, I haunting cry no, again. no oh. pun intended but yeah it's it's beautiful and then you know in re relative to um reincarnation one of and so this and this kind of this is a belief that I have now since I heard this is that you know if you imagine that you know we're all well not imagine we're all made up of of atom cells what you know mm -hmm. energetic units these energetic units are are when we leave this body become independent and so you can have your entire being in each of those pieces mm -hmm. and so therefore you can be here you can be back on another planet you can be over here you can be visiting your mom and your sister at the same time in spirit you know and that to me made a lot of sense mm -hmm. is you know there's fractions of you were, were you know we become like fractals i don't know if that's the right word but it's very mathematic yeah uh, it's almost like, so like for the listeners, we're 
we are surrounded by some lights that are kind of hanging around in different directions and different pointing different ways. Oh, and in the podcast room? Yeah, like, in the we podcast are, room. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't see them. Oh, yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a really great visual representation of what you just said is that it doesn't really matter where you are. You are, you are somewhere. And you might just be looking in it. You might be living or coexisting in a different direction or, or riding a different wavelength. And you might fall into a different disc of a universe. I don't know. But that just is that's that's life. I think that's what made Interstellar such a fun movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's another one I'll have to see. It's great. Mm -hmm. I'm so into that kind of film yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a well, big softy. Everything makes me cry. <laughs> that was, I cry. Watch out for Arri Polka. But Ar <laughs> Arrival, did you see that movie? Yes. Oh my, I, was, I went with my friend James to that movie and I was sobbing. Did you warn him before, like, I'm probably going to bawl I, my I out. didn't, uh -huh. but he was like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm yeah. good. Science <laughs> is very emotional for me too. Yeah, it's there's like, so many just, realizations. Oh, and, and it's so funny because people think of me as like this, you know, I mean, people that don't know me because I'm really not like that. I'm a scorpion. But, you know, they think of me as this ooey-gooey kind of person. It's like, oh, no, science makes me cry. Science yeah. gets me excited. Oh, another yeah. great movie. Uh, the um, oh, What is it called? Uh, Particle Fever. You can watch it on That's YouTube. Right. I've tried to find it in other places, but I sobbed watching that. It's <gasps> wow. such a beautiful film. It's it's a documentary. Particle Fever. Okay, I'll have to watch that. So On my list for tonight. Good. Particle Fever Wonderful. and Interstellar. And ghosts. Totally different movies. Well, and, you know, <laughs> but, that, but that explains too. You know, there's different vibrations that, like, I work in. There's there's uh, uh, the psychic vibration, which is it, it's one type of vibration. And so, you know, I'm connecting with um, a matching vibration mm -hmm. w with people. You know, to mm -hmm. understand, to get insight. You know, into what's going on with them and that's what comes kind of comes through the cards and you know and and i my my astrology is more intuitive than anything mm -hmm. um, although I've, I've had years of training and experience in it but um but mediumship is a completely different vibration mm -hmm. and it's almost like they're you know, spirit is vibrating on this one wavelength and mm. they have to kind of lower their vibration a little bit and I have to kind of raise mine yeah. to meet it. And that's that's where sometimes that miss that communication if, if I if I come back down here into the psychic vibration, I'm out of that connection. It's mm -hmm. different. It's very, very different. And I can feel when I'm doing that. I mean it's you know, and and um, there's like a parallel you can see it in people when they're yeah. doing it like I love watching that in students because I got called out on that one of, one of my in, in my training over in, in London real early on and never forgot that I was like how did you know I wasn't in the power and she's like my dear that's what we're supposed to know and 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 now it's like I can see that in, yeah. in students you know mm -hmm. and it's really cool it's like no you went psychic it's like I don't you know and there's nothing wrong with that it's like if you're getting information for somebody that's helpful it doesn't really Matter. you know in the big picture but sure right. but mediumship what it does is it brings the experience of the person it's like you feel that love you feel that Down that earth. connection with them yeah. it's like having being able to have that that conversation with sure. them that you never thought you'd have again you yeah know? Mm -hmm. so I'm aware of your time Susie so let's um let's transition into sure. this this final little bit yeah, cool. and because I want to make sure that people know how to find you I want to say that first usually I wait to the end but just in case we run out of time how can people find you if they want to um, if you if you can't find me, you ain't looking. Um, mm -hmm. Type my name in. You can Google my name. Um, but my website is astrogirl12. That's a s t r o g i r l twelve dot com. And uh, I have a Facebook page. It's Astro Girl Susie. That's Susie with a Z i e. And um, those are two of the the best places to. And I'll put links me. Mm -hmm. on HeyHumanPodcast dot com. Yep. So. And you can book online. I do readings all over the world. Um, I can do them, you know, video video chats or just via phone um, or in person in, in Nashville. And, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. All right. Let's so, see what happens. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. So where did my, where did the people go here? Let's see. Um, just give me a second. I gotta reconnect. Absolutely. They were all over me a minute ago. Mm -hmm. They backed away. They went to okay, I have. Them. I do have a man here. Um, man's coming forward. Oh, t -t 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 feels dad, dad, um, dad. And, and he's uh, he's showing me that he is. Um, <laughs> he's funny. He's he's kind of showing me that he has. He's kind of enjoying this conversation. He said he's <laughs> a little bit geeky, and um, he he. Uh, 
He never thought of himself as smart, though. That's one of the things about him that I'm getting is he doesn't feel... He, he, he just didn't feel like he was as smart as everybody knew that he was. Um, and he... Uh, where do you want to come in? There's, a, a, there's an M name that goes with him. It's like a, a Margaret, Martha, M name. Do, do either one of you understand this? Male coming through... Um, it's, it's, he's coming through on dad's side. It could be dad, it could be grandfather. Um, it almost, it sounds a little bit like your dad, but I know your dad's still here. Yeah, so, he's still here. Um, but he's got this kind of geeky side to him. It's like he was smart, but he didn't know how smart he was. Interesting. Do you understand that? Well, I was it's getting a possible. female, it was a female name that I was getting okay, with the there's M. there's definitely M's on the, yes. Okay, so is it connected to a male, the female M name connected to a male that has that kind of personality yes. I was talking about? Yes. Okay, so who is this? Is this dad or granddad? I honestly feel like it's, I mean, my dad knows he's pretty smart. <laughs> and his dad definitely did as well. But I feel almost the, I feel the woman is... Okay, are the men here? Both, uh, uh, dad and like grandfather a, here? Maybe Because I'm, I'm connected with daddy. Dad is yeah. Okay, granddad is not. He is not. Okay, that's who That's who I'm connecting with then. Okay. Um, okay, I so... I knew him as a little girl. Okay. So let me rephrase <laughs> what I said then as far as him not believing that he was smart. He, he didn't show it off. He was humble about it. Yeah. I feel like he was not somebody who put that in people's faces. Okay. Um, and, and was so... Was he humorous? I, I'm giving you what I got, okay. so I'll, I'll yeah. do, let me just give you what I got, what I get from him. Um, okay, let me get back into that now. Hold on. So, so the M name is connected to him, is what I get. The female M name is feels connected to him, and he is. Um, hold on. He wants people to know that he's that he's walking again or something that he's that he's able to walk that he's free to walk and go where he wants to go now. Um, he's, he's making me feel like there was a lot of restriction around him when he was towards the end, like he couldn't do the things that he wanted to. I feel like he was yeah. he's showing up as somebody who was very active in his life, yeah. and that was very hard for him to be restricted. Um, and he, he keeps wanting he keeps wanting to talk about this like a whole bunch of he's got five people that he wants to talk about here. Five people that are all here that meant something really important to him. And but I feel two of them are connected to you. So is this so this is grandfather do you have a do you have a sister or brother? That, both. Both? All right. So that'd be three. And then the other two, I'm trying to figure out who the other two are that he wants to talk to here. Um he said, he said, the stubborn one, the stubborn one. She won't listen. I know. Um, you understand that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so hi to her. Um, and, wow. and he said that, that she just needs to, so I don't know if this is you or whatever, but the way I'm hearing it is she just needs to keep going. Um, if she gives up too soon, I'll have, wow, to, I'll have so to, I'll have to come down there. <laughs> I'll, I'll have, have to come, come down, down here. here. Is what come he down said. Here. Yeah. So I guess if this is the I man you're you wondering I if he had a to. sense of humor, that sounds like he has a sense he of humor. He has a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> don't make me come down there. Um, don't give up because he said we don't quit. We don't quit. Don't. I never let anybody quit. And he's very, very proud of that. He's sending you lots and lots of love. Um, he also wants to talk about a new baby coming into the family soon. Do you understand that? She's crying. And I know. I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I'm covered in goosebumps because this man loves you and he's just and and I just I can't even say that enough I feel him every day yeah he is right there with you he may have even been there last night it could have maybe he brought been. us together yeah. he's very know. protective yeah. um but he also is very encouraging yeah and all the men in my family share that never give up don't yeah. give up and we all say that every day so and he said he said it's okay that now there's somebody else so this may be your brother i'm not sure there's a male in the family he said it's okay that he didn't go the path that anybody else did he has permission to go be himself yeah. because he worries about that and he feels like he's betraying the family or betraying yeah. something but he's just got his own path he said i get yeah. that now he said yeah. if i was there i wouldn't have got it i would have tried to make him stick to the to whatever it is sure and he said but but no let him he's free he can he's he's free to go do what he wants yeah um he's he wants to thank you for 
Um, he's, he's saying buttoning up the house. Do you understand that? Keep it tight. Is, is it, okay. Um, buttoning up the house. There's something that I'm able to do that is really actually quite remarkable with my family being the youngest one. Mm hmm So, so yeah. yeah, so just, just keep going. And, and, but this, now this woman wants to come in though and say hi. And it's an M, it like, it's like Mary, Margaret, oh something. Oh my God. Oh my this. God. This, Margaret is dad's mom. Okay. Wow. So. And they're really close. We're okay. all really close. Love, love, love to them. Um, he's, and I feel as though, and it's interesting because I, wow. if you hadn't said that, I, I was trying to Sorry. suss out. No, but no, that's okay. <laughs> I was trying to suss out because I almost felt as if they're there with him, which yeah. means they are very connected to him as well. Yeah. And the, that connection was never lost. Oh, so, yeah. so that's really, um, and he, he said, he just keeps saying, I'm holding down the fort. And he Aww. said, um, He's, he said, now he's got a brother that's there. Um, somebody's calling brother, brother in arms, brother, brother in arms. That's brother. military. Does he have a brother it? there? Does he have Does a brother that's my passed? grandfather yeah. have a brother? Yeah. Okay. I Were think they, so. Did they serve in the military together? They escaped the war. Oh, Lord. His brother, his brother in arms. They're together. And that's what he always wanted. Yep. He said, it's, it's, it's finally good. He said, it's finally good. So, wow. and he's also letting me know that the things that kept him from wanting to talk about those days, it's clear. He said, it's clear. I see everything now yeah. and, I, and I'm okay. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I feel like there was that part of him, um, and this happens often with military, they can't sure. talk about certain things. And when his brother passed, he shut down even more because mm -hmm. he didn't have his brother to share that with. Yeah. And so now it's like everything is out. They're yeah. living free. Wow. And, um, and did his brother, ha was his brother missing a limb? Yeah. Is, okay. Holy shit. Yeah. He said, That's he so said cool. he's, he's got all his limbs now. He oh my said, God. That's he said, amazing. everything's great. He said, we're, we're all, we're all together here and we're all together. And I feel, he said, we're all I together like, here. And we're all together. All That's, together yeah. Now. Yep. That's, now we just need a bongo with a symbol at the end. <laughs> no, but that's really, that is very so, powerful. Shit. Lots of that's love to you. That's a lot of the reason why he, he didn't want to talk about it so much, because he was just like, I know it's going to be right. It's just not right here, yeah. right now. It keeps putting a moon over your head for some reason, the moon over your head. Do you often connect with the moon, or do, do you follow moon cycles and things like that? I would like to. Okay. And I think that's the next step for me. Okay. Because I have a lot of sun. Uh -huh. I have a lot of sun. Love so much sun. That what does that mean? I'm very bright. I'm uh -huh. very vibrant. And I, I, one of the things I'm trying to focus in on is to rechannel that brightness so that I don't control a situation that. Okay, so very yin off. yang. So, so this is this is you connecting with the divine feminine. That's yes. what that is. And he wouldn't actually say that, but he's he's putting he's yes. putting the moon over your head, saying connect with connect yeah. with that piece of you, the divine feminine. Yeah. Um, and I know that's again not what he would say because he had no idea about any of this stuff. But he but he was you know again he did have some higher he did have some wisdom. He's very um, very brilliant. And and so so balance that out is yeah. is the message. Balance that out. That's so interesting. Because you know? last and night when we. I'm always in search of balance, and I have the Scorpio cusp, and I have mm. that whip sometimes where people are like, whoa, this little 411 chick is like being a boss. It's like, yes, I'm being a boss, when but I'm nice about night, it. When we met last night, I thought, this woman has so much masculine energy, which mm -hmm. I, I, I have love. a lot of testosterone on yeah, my, my mom's side. I'm very, you know, I, yeah. I have a lot of very strong women in my life, yeah. and I was like, oh, well, that explains why we're talking, you know, like, I'm, I just, I like You're that help to it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? There is another woman on the other side that does want to come through and tell you that you're beautiful because you look just like her. Um, I, and I feel like this is... Uh, I still feel like I'm on Dad's side. Is it that... Is, okay. This is incredible. Do you look just like your grandmother or great-grandmother? Or great-great-great-grandmother? This is somebody who's on the other feel side. I like it was... I, I want to say, though, that it was my grandmother's... Jean? Jean? Joan? Jane? Something like that. J, it's a J name. I'm getting on the something. Other side. She's, I want to say it was my Omama's mother. Omama is my, is married to Opapa, who was my dad's dad, who passed and has the brother with the limb. Okay. So, anyways, but she wants to pop in and say hi, give love to the <gasps> family. Um, he is with you, and and you know he's he's not going anywhere. He said oh, yeah. he's never gone anywhere, um, and he said, "Don't you worry." And he actually, okay, I know this is going to sound really corny for me to say this since you told me all this stuff, but he's saying, "Don't worry about the ghosts. He's got it. 
<laughs> so, so if you wherever you're say wherever you're staying, if you're feeling multiple people there, he's he's got it. He's 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 got you back. Don't worry about any. He says nothing's beautiful. nothing's gonna get you. Thank you. Um, so he and he um, and awesome. he loves you very very much and yeah. love to the family and happiness for this new baby. He said that baby's gonna know me. That baby's gonna know me. You better believe it. Wow. So he's gonna so be around. Cool. And you know, I I had a reading earlier this year who also said very similar things. So this is very interesting. <laughs> Yay! That is so freaking cool. That's really awesome. Wow. Cool. Wow. Thanks for letting me do that. I'm very Margaret. That. that was like, whoa, that like that's incredible. Yeah, and they were really in touch with him. Who? Yes, they I mean, are. They are. Yes, they are. Because I literally was going like, "Wow, they were on the other side." Like I twice, like I thought that my so. grandfather speaks to me every day somehow. That's awesome. Yeah. And he passed when I was three or four, but I remember every moment with him. Mm. And there are some moments that are gray and faded and blurred in my childhood and my youth, but those moments with him were so real. It was as if it's as if I still live them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's well. Time him. isn't linear, right? It's yeah. <laughs> I couldn't control tears. They were like happiness is coming out of my eyes. But see, that's <laughs> why I love to do that. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It, it, it's so. Um, it, it's just so powerful. Yeah. It's just so powerful. My the hair on my arms stood straight yeah. up into the air. And and, yeah. and the funny thing is, people are like, oh, isn't it tiring doing that all the time? It's like, no, I am so out of You're the so way alive. when I'm doing it. You're like, just a channel. It's it's not me. Mm -hmm. And so it just flows through, and it and it's such a. It's effortless when it's done right. Mm. <laughs> when I start to feel physical manifestations in my body, like that, that aren't spirit showing me something, because sometimes they'll show me like, oh, you know, I had trouble breathing or this, you know, yeah. I'll feel it in my body. But if I'm feeling my own physical body, like I'm not in, I'm not doing it. I'm doing a psychic reading or I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, but mediumship is like, it's like, I just kind of step really out amazing. of the way oh, and spirit comes <laughs> in and, and mm -hmm. I'm just the translator. Yeah. And it's, it's so, it's beautiful. I feel like he's standing like right here. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, thanks for thank coming you. to this. <laughs> Susie, thank you so thank very you. much. I love this. This is great. <laughs> and thank you everyone for listening. Again, I'll put links of all of this and how to get a hold of Susie on heyhumanpodcast.com. And thanks for listening. Bye, everybody.